If you've been investing for more than five years and you feel like you've barely made money, in the next five minutes, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest reasons why people don't make money on their investments and what you can do about it right now to change that so you start actually making money. One of the things I do for my clients in my Wealth in 7 program is making sure their investment portfolio is suitable for them, which means making sure they're maximizing the returns based on the risk level. And of course, making sure they're not leaving any money on the table and educating them so that they gain the confidence to not be rash or emotional when it comes to investment decisions. When giving into your emotions over your investments, that's how people lose money. So if you want one-on-one -on -one support with your investments so you can build your million dollar portfolio faster, apply for a spot in my Wealth in 7 program. The link is below. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Michelle Hung. I'm an author of two investing books, The Sassy Investor and Investing for Teens, How to Save, Invest, and Grow Money. I am a financial educator and also a fee-only financial planner, helping people build their million-dollar investment portfolio in the stock market. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make over and over again is not taking enough risk, which is why they're not making money on their investments. So I'm going to explain how not taking enough risk can cause you to not make money on your investments and what you can do so you can start making more money on your returns while making sure at the same time your money doesn't go to zero. The more risk you take, the higher the potential returns you can make. There's a saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch, which means there's no such thing as little risk, big reward. That's just not how life works. When it comes to the stock market, the biggest risk is when an individual company goes to zero. So here is when your money can actually get wiped out if a company you invest in goes bankrupt. But again, you're not losing any more than what you put in. So if your portfolio consists of, say, only you know three crappy penny stocks, I like to call them peasant stocks, the chances of your portfolio going to zero is very high because it's these types of companies that have a high probability of going bankrupt. But there's a way to mitigate that risk, and that's to invest in many companies across the board at the same time. That way, if one or a few companies go bankrupt, you got the other ones in your portfolio to hold the fort down for you. This is being diversified, and you do that from investing in ETFs or mutual funds. If you don't know what those are, then check out this video. So you diversify your portfolio, but you're not out of the woods yet. Even when you own lots of companies, they're still exposed to some risk. Volatility, which is simply the stock price fluctuations, and it looks something like this. As you can see, when you hold on to your investments, eventually it all goes up. Okay, despite the short term price fluctuations, which is what you see in these little downed squiggly lines. Okay, these are the short term price fluctuations, which is why when you're investing, you have to make sure you're not touching this money for a long time, like at least five plus years. You need time to recover from the downturns that can happen in the short term. So things like invasions, COVID, riots, all these things Okay, including financial uh, crises, all of them, despite these, you know, seemingly big downturns, eventually it just goes back up. It all recovers. You need time to recover from these downturns that can happen in the short term. They're bound to repeat itself in some other variation. How do you take on more risk so you can make more money? Simply making sure you have a higher component of equities, which are stocks, than bonds in your portfolio. If you're not sure what these are, check out this video. But in a nutshell, there are two ways to make money with stocks. One is capital gains, which is the growth in stock price. And two, dividends, which are profits that are paid out to owners, which are investors like yourself and I. So I get it. The stock markets have been quite ugly the last year. Everything is down like 20%. However, you have not stopped receiving dividend payments because companies are still making profits because we're all still spending money. We're still making companies rich. Eventually, like I showed you earlier, this too shall pass. We'll get out of this recession and companies will continue to grow and make more money, which will help stock prices increase over time. You just have to be patient. And it's also why it's important that when you're investing, you give yourself a long time horizon to ride out these tougher times in the stock markets in the short term. 
with boring ass bonds, you only make money from the interest payments you're promised. Nothing more and nothing less. Yes, there is a capital gain component, but that's not why people invest in bonds. Nobody invests in bonds with the hope of getting rich. Bonds are good for predictable and stable income, which comes in handy when you stop getting a paycheck. Bonds are also less volatile than stocks, which serve as a decent cushion from your portfolio if you don't want massive price swings. And because bonds are generally less volatile than stocks, they don't have that unlimited price gain that stock prices experience. You won't make as much money in your portfolio holding bonds. Lower risk means lower returns. That's what happens when you invest in bonds. If you're investing with a robo-advisor and you selected a risk level on a scale of 1 to 10, around like five to seven, somewhere in the middle, then your portfolio is likely hovering around 50% to 70% of equities and the rest in bonds, which is why you're probably not seeing your portfolio grow a lot. Generally speaking, if you only want equities in your portfolio, you choose the maximum risk level of 10, which will get you anywhere from 90 to 100% equities in your portfolio. So by making that quick adjustment to your investment account is how you'll increase your risk level. Like Likewise, if you're working with a financial advisor, you have to let them know that you want to increase your risk tolerance and want mostly equities in your portfolio. But before you do that, of course, make sure it all aligns with your financial goals and the time horizon of those goals. That is, you're still investing for at least another five to 10 years before you start dipping into your investments. Now, if you need help with that and you want to have more control over your investments and learn how to manage your own portfolio, then I invite you to apply for a spot in my Wealth in 7 program where I help you build your million dollar investment portfolio in as little as eight weeks. The link is below. I will see you in the next video.